know, the one thing I didn't have in my garden was artichokes. Those are really hard to grow. And in Italy, artichokes are very tender. You can eat the whole thing, but here we have to buy the globe artichokes, which are a little bigger. And I've cooked artichokes for this recipe today, the torta grande that I want to make for you. And what I'm doing here now is just taking the leaves off the sides because you can eat this. Don't throw this away, but all I want to deal with is the heart that's right there in the center, you see? So when you're not looking, I'm going to be eating those later. And now for this, all I want to do is cut that up. And I've cooked four of these already in boiling water. And you want to cook them for about 20 minutes. And you have to cook them until you can pull a leaf off the side, the leaves that I just put on, the, on that little dish. And then for this recipe, I just want the hearts. So I've cut up all the hearts already. And I'm just going to add the extra one here to the bowl. Because now, besides artichokes, of course, this has all those other neat things that I took out of my garden. And one of them, of course, is fennel. And that's finocchio in Italian. And here it is. And remember, mine were a little smaller than this, so I had to send Costanza to the store, but she didn't mind. So now I want to put this as part of the vegetables. And to do that, I want to saute them a little bit. So I'm going to add, oh, about four tablespoons of olive oil to a frying pan. While I'm speaking of frying pans, let me check back here because I've got some sausage cooking. And that looks like it's just about done. And it is. I have to turn that off. Let me get that out now and drain that. This is homemade Italian sausage with fennel seeds and hot red pepper. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that later on. Back to the fennel. That's why I had to give Costanza the old direction about getting this in the store for me. So now this can go right into my olive oil, all of it. And I want that to saute down a little bit. I don't want it to fully cook because I'm going to be cooking it again. So let me get rid of the tough pieces. And then with that, here are those leeks that I got out of my garden. And these are from my garden. Look at the long leaves that these have. And now, these are fairly dirty when you get them in the house, so you have to really clean them well. And then, you just want to use the white part, you see? This, unfortunately, que pecato, we have to throw out. So that goes out. And then all I want to do is slice these up into rings. I think you have the idea about separating those. I'm just going to put those in now and get the rest for you. And Leeks, of course, are an ancient, ancient vegetable in Italian cooking. And do you know that Nero ate leeks every day of his life? because he thought it improved the condition of his singing ability. And now this is called a torta grande because it's made with a pastry dough. And here's one that I've made up, and now I've had chilling for a while. And This is a dough that's made with two cups of unbleached flour and a cup of pastry flour. And it has about two tablespoons of sugar and one egg and a little bit of salt and water and butter, about, a t about uh, eight tablespoons of butter. And now what I want to do is roll this out to fit a tart shell. You see, and here's one that has a removable bottom, because I want to be able to get that out. So here's the way to do that. After you've made up the dough, and you can either do that in a food processor, or you can do it by hand in a bowl, then you want to take half of the dough and put it on some wax paper, and then get two other sheets of wax paper and put it over the top. And then, let me move some of this out of the way. I trust that you all have a rolling pin that works at your house. So here's mine, and it never fails me. I can always find it. So what you want to do is beat that down just a little bit to get it going, you see? You want to soften it up a little bit because of the butter that's in that. And then after you do that, well, then you have to start rolling it. And the more you beat it, of course, the softer it's going to become. Now this, as I told you, is homemade Italian sausage made with pork casings and just a pork butt that I bought in the grocery store. And then all we did here was season the pork, the pork butt, with fennel seeds and coarse salt and pepper and some hot red pepper because I like my sausage fairly hot. And this is all going to go into my casserole. I'm going to add this right to my artichokes and my fennel and my leeks. And I think that this is a very, very satisfying dinner, and even good enough for company. 
It certainly would be good enough to serve even during the Renaissance, I think. So there's my sausage. i get that off, and now I can put that right here with my artichokes. So we can get rid of that. And now, let's see if the dough is going to let, allow me to roll it a little better. And there it goes. So now I've got my artichokes and I've got my sausages. And now I want to add some of that flat leaf parsley that I got out of my garden. Oh, about a good two tablespoons. And then, you remember the leaves from the fennel. Well, I want about two tablespoons of those. I'm not wasting anything. And then, some fennel seeds. Oh, about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half. And pine nuts. Now, these come from the stone pine tree in Italy, and they're very hard to extract, and that's why they're very expensive. And here, about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. Doesn't this look good already? And now some coarse black pepper and some salt to taste. And now, just want to mix that up. And in with that are going to go the leeks and the fennel. And this is starting to smell wonderful. And it's cooking down, but it needs, oh, maybe about a minute more to go. So let me continue with this. This is one of those improvisation recipes. Actually, this recipe I did make up, but I took my idea, of course, from old cooking manuscripts. After you've beat the darn thing down and rolled it out, then you want to take the paper off, like so. And it should come off fairly easy. If you get a little hole, don't worry, because you can always patch it. And then take your pan and just dump it in. And then pull the paper off gently. And I'm gonna peel off a little piece there. And some days are better than others in the kitchen, let me tell you. Okay, this is coming along, but I need to stretch it a little bit more on this side. So, believe me, I've made a lot of these. Some of them look better than this, I can tell you that. There. And I'm using a fluted pan because I really like the way this comes out at the end. I want to push it up a little bit more here. There. Finally. Okay, now I can take these out and put them in my bowl. And they smell wonderful. So now there are my leeks and there's my fennel. Now, what do I need to add to this? I need to add just some eggs and some wine, and that's going to help bind all of this together. So here I have three eggs, and I just want to whip those up very quickly with a whisk, and then add, oh, maybe about a quarter of a cup of white wine into that. That's about a quarter of a cup. You just give that another quick beat. Does this look good? And then that goes right over this mixture. You see, just like that. And now, mix this again. And look at how beautiful that looks. And now this is going to go right into this shell. And it should fit in there, all of it. This is a hearty, hearty tart to eat. And with this, really, you only need a salad to round out the meal and maybe a light dessert over that after that. Now, doesn't that look beautiful? Let me get that little piece and put him in there. Okay, so then now, what you need to do is put a top on there. And here is the other one that I rolled out earlier. And let me get the paper off. And again, you just want to take the shell in front of you, lift off, lift up the, the top dough and place it right over the top. And then carefully peel the paper back. Just like that. And then with your trusty rolling pin, get a non-skid one, go right over the edges, you see, because you want to seal those edges down. You have this wonderful looking tart, and now you want to do something with those scraps of dough because you don't want to throw that out. And what you can do is make some designs like I did here, you see? And you can just make, oh, a flower design. This one happens to be a tulip design. And so you can put leaves and tulips. I think that that's enough. I won't even use the second one. Just like that. See, doesn't that look pretty? And then what you want 
is a beaten egg. And all you want to do, now your oven's on at 375 degrees. All you want to do is brush over the top of this. And this is going to go into a preheated oven. And you're going to cook this, oh, for about, I would say, 30 to 35 minutes. You want it to be nice and browned on the top. So brush it all over the top really well. And I think that that looks super. And then you just want to make sure that those edges are pinched down because you don't want any gaps or open spots so that the juices will fall out. So there, looks like a Renaissance piece to me. So there it goes, in the oven.